I simulated 10 years in F123 and this is the madness that unfolded. Now, I don't want to waste your time, so quickly subscribe if you go on to enjoy this video and thanks to my mate Aki for doing the simulating. Let's do this. In season one, Verstappen stayed on top to claim his third title and Red Bull their sixth constructors. Alonso also claimed his final race win and a few podiums before he retired at the end of the season. So with Alonso leaving the sport, seats had already opened up. As well as losing Alonso, they also dropped Stroll, which meant Liam Lawson and George Russell replaced them. At Mercedes, the outgoing Russell was replaced by Ocon and the MDC at Alpine was filled in by Zhou Guan Yu. Magnussen then replaced him at Alfa Romeo and the Haas seat was taken by Albon, who in turn was replaced by Paul Cher at Williams. And for next season, there were aero and chassis regulation changes. Looking at the performance graph, Haas looked like they've built a decent car, being level with McLaren by the end of the season, despite finishing 9th. It'll be interesting to see if they can build on this and do better in Season 2. Season 2 stayed the same as Verstappen once again won it to claim his 4th title in F1. He battled with Leclerc instead of Hamilton this time, which resulted in a very close title fight. But the good thing to mention is that Leclerc finally won at Monaco, in a Ferrari as well. Haas also managed to move up one position into 8th as they showed a bit of improvement. There were no driver changes for Season 3 apart from Perez being dropped by Red Bull for Lance Stroll. Haas have actually got a better car than McLaren and are kind of the 5th best team. So now could be the time to push up the standings with no regulation changes coming up for Season 3. Well in Season 3, Mercedes and Hamilton were back on top to claim their 9th and 8th titles respectively. Hamilton won out in another tight battle with Verstappen as Ocon helped out massively in Mercedes Constructors fight as Stroll was 7th for Red Bull. Some notable moments included Ocon doing the last of first in Saudi Arabia, Tatiana Calderon does not count as a driver, and a shocking result really, Felipe Drogovic replaced Ocon for the final race at Abu Dhabi and won while also getting the fastest lap. Alvatari also claimed their first points of the save in Season 3. And with Hulkenberg retiring, silly season began. It started with the Ruvula replacing Hulkenberg at Haas and Magnussen being dropped by Alfa Romeo for Dennis Hauger. Piastri at McLaren was dropped for Roy Nassani and Sargent and Porcher were dropped by Williams at Boschong and surprisingly Ocon who was kicked out of Mercedes for the new race winner Drogovic. For next season, there is durability and powertrain regulation changes and Haas have now nosedived and become the worst car as they showed little development throughout season 3. Nothing has really changed so far at the front though. Into season 4 and Mercedes absolutely dominated the standings beating Red Bull by nearly 300 points. Hamilton unsurprisingly claimed the title and his 9th with 13 wins and 21 podiums. You may notice that Drogovic's 213 points alongside Hamilton's points total does not add up to 943. This is because, despite finishing on the podium in all races up to Austria as well as getting 3 wins, Drogovic was dropped for Porcher who could only claim 1 win and 8 podiums in more races and finish behind him in the standings. Mercedes are turning into the new Red Bull with these ruthless and very unfair driver changes. Moving on to the driver moves, and Perez as well as Hamilton retire, which leads to mania in the paddock. Leclerc replaces Hamilton at Mercedes and escapes the Ferrari pain. Piastri also comes back into F1 to replace Charles at Ferrari. Boschung gets dropped by Williams for Nassani, and Magnussen comes out of his kind of retirement to rejoin McLaren. Drogovic did find a seat as he replaced Liam Lawson at Aston Martin. Gasly was dropped by Alpine in favour of Porcher, and the most predictable transfer ever in F1 to replace Porcher at Mercedes, Logan Sargent. For next season, there are chassis regulation changes, and it's looking like Ferrari have closed the gap to Mercedes and Red Bull, with Aston Martin and the rest of the team still being far off. In Season 5, Mercedes stay on top as Leclerc claims his first title with a great showing. 12 wins in his debut season at the Silver Arrows, along with 20 podiums, isn't bad. Max was hard done by with the DNF in round 1, which may have been the difference as he finished with 11 wins and 20 podiums. Sargent actually didn't do too bad in his first season as he picked up 4 podiums and a lot of points, although this wasn't close to Leclerc. An interesting result was that at Zandvoort, Leclerc won ahead of Verstappen and right after, Max retired. Despite him retiring, he continued to race until the end of the season. Max also finished on the podium in every race he didn't retire, and more than that, he was in the top 2 every race. On to driver changes and there was a mid-season change at Alvatari as Boschung replaced De Vries. At the end of the season though, Bottas retired. Sato replaced him at Alfa Romeo. Sargent was dropped by Mercedes, being replaced by Kevin Magnussen. De Vries joined McLaren to replace the outgoing Magnussen and Stroll was rightfully fired at Red Bull. The replacement however was anything but better as Roy Nassani, the 63 rated driver, partnered up with Verstappen. Yuri Vips replaced him at Williams. For the next season there were no reg changes and the performance graph gave similar readings. Despite being the 5th best car, 
Maybe having Roy and Asani in the Williams was holding them back as they finished 8th in the Constructors. Season 6 now and Mercedes remain at the top as Leclerc claims another title getting 10 wins and 21 podiums. Max could not challenge him only being able to get 8 wins and 19 podiums. This is also a season for first time winners. Piastri claimed victory on home soil at Melbourne and Magnussen got a victory on debut in Bahrain for Mercedes. In mid-season, Vips was dropped by Williams to accompany Nassani back into the sinking ship as Lawson joined the Red Bull team. He came second in a Red Bull 1-2 in his first race before winning the next time around. On to driver changes and this time there was a lot. Obviously the Nassani, Vips and Lawson moves happened first, but then Max finally retired after finishing second again. His seat at Red Bull was filled by Piastri for an Oceana Red Bull pairing. In other news, 87 rated Albon was dropped by Haas for Marino Sato. Ralph Boschong in turn replaced him at Alfa Romeo and Vips filled his seat at Alfa Tauri. With Piastri at Red Bull, there was no better candidate to replace him at the Scuderia than Roy Nassani. How was he doing this? I don't know. Replacing him at Williams was Stroll as he reunited with his first team. Drogovic was also dropped by Aston Martin despite beating Russell and this allowed Doohan to enter the F1 circus for the first time. Joe was dropped by Alpine leading to Gasly rejoining and finally we have one of the most unfair sackings of the save so far, behind Drogovic getting dropped by Mercedes of course. Ocon was let go by Williams despite scoring all of their 11 points which helped them get 8th in the constructors. He was replaced by Frederick Vesti. There were massive regulation changes as the chassis, aero and durability were affected. We're still yet to see a real shock in the constructors but Aston Martin have finally closed the gap and are close to the top 3 teams. On to season 7 and we have another different winner. Piastri claimed the title ahead of teammate Lawson as Red Bull dominated the championship. Leclerc still managed 7 wins but it wasn't enough. Piastri managed 9 and 20 podiums as he deservedly won the title. We have another first time winner though as Doohan managed victory in the Aston Martin as they finished ahead of Ferrari. This may have been helped by Nassani being in the car but we'll never know. He was replaced in mid-season by everyone's favourite sub Drogovic but he couldn't pull any wonders with the 4th best car. In this season Aston Martin got their first win since season 1 and to be honest they haven't been anything special in this simulation so far. At the end of the season Doohan was somehow dropped by Aston Martin for Iwasa. Stroll was also dropped by Williams after getting outscored by Vesti who guided them to 8th in the constructors. Sargent replaced him at Williams as De Vries was dropped by McLaren in favour of Drogovic. And 10 points if you can guess who Ferrari replaced Drogovic with. Pat yourself on the back if you guessed Roy Nassani because believe it or not they gave him a second chance. You can't keep getting away with there were no reg changes for the next year and Mercedes have now become the 4th best car and Aston are the 2nd best. In season 8, Red Bull stayed at the top but it was Leclerc who claimed the driver's title. 9 wins and 18 podiums was enough as wins were shared between Lawson, Piastri, Leclerc, Magnussen and Russell. At Aston Martin, despite scoring 5 podiums, Iwasa was replaced by the man himself, Roy Nissani, after Austria. After the season was over, Magnussen retired which kicked off silly season. He was replaced by Novelak, Sonoda was dropped by Alfa Tari and replaced by Drogovic, Kalen Williams joined McLaren to fill Drogovic's vacant seat, Russell was dropped by Aston Martin and replaced by Vesti, Armstrong replaced Vesti at Williams and Sainz was dropped by Ferrari. Doohan replaced him at Ferrari. And finally, Portier was dropped by Alpine and replaced by Awasa. For next season there was a powertrain regulation change and going back to the trusty performance graph, Alfa Romeo have made massive improvements and are now come to be the 5th best team. In season 9, Mercedes returned to the top as Leclerc got his 4th title. He beat Piastri by 10 points and the wins were spread out across many drivers. But a quick mention to Alfa Romeo who got 5th in the constructors, carried by Halga mainly who scored points in every single race. But back to the individuals, first off, Novelak claimed 3 wins, Sonoda claimed 2 and Ocon got 4. You may be wondering where Yuki and Ocon came from and once again we return to the ruthless Mercedes. After scoring 193 points by Austria, Mercedes dropped Novelak and replaced him with Ocon as he returned from the dead. Doohan was dropped at Ferrari and replaced by Sonoda who won on debut. Novelak was also dropped after scoring 3 wins in a row, pretty mental. Doohan joining McLaren was the last move in mid-season but post-season, Sainz retired and caused a few changes. Caelan Williams filled his seat at Ferrari which allowed Enzo Fittipaldi to join McLaren. Boschong went back to Williams as he replaced Armstrong. Doohan went to Alfa Romeo for the final season and Stroll was dropped again by Ferrari. But most shockingly, after his fourth title, Leclerc was dropped by Mercedes for Novelak. 
For the final season, there were major regulation changes as aero, chassis and durability were affected. And for the final time, the performance graph shows us that Alfa Romeo have finally caught up with the top teams. If only they did this sooner, we may have had a shock winner. But anyways, on to season 10. Final season now and we have a new winner. Liam Lawson won out over Piastri as he claimed his first driver's title. Red Bull also won the constructors ahead of Mercedes. There was another shock though as Alfa Romeo outperformed Aston Martin to finish in fourth. Annoyingly, we can't see the individual wins or podiums because the save ends itself after the 10th season is done, but we can only assume the wins were shared out between the top three. However, even though there were no end of season moves, mid-season was still spicy. Fittipaldi was dropped at McLaren and Novelak joined to replace him. And George Russell came full circle in his career and rejoined Mercedes again for the second half of the season. So now we've covered all 10 seasons, let's see the overall stats. Starting off with the teams and it was an even split with Mercedes and Red Bull getting 5 titles each. In the drivers, Leclerc got the most with 4, with Verstappen and Hamilton getting 2, and the Oceanic Red Bull pair getting 1 apiece. On to the wins and starting off with Leclerc who got the most with 56, followed behind by Verstappen with 50, Hamilton was next with 32 and Piastri came after with 21 wins. Lawson, our last champion, had 16 wins, Ocon had 8, Russell had 6, Drogovic won 4 times, Perez won thrice and Novelak also had 3 wins. Magnussen and Sonoda had 2 wins each and Sainz, Alonso, Portier and Duan all had 1 win. So that is all for this video. If you did enjoy it and you like this kind of stuff, let me know by subscribing to the channel and if you want more, I'll give you more. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.